All right, what is up, everybody? This is Marshall Lee of Donkey Job Projects and the YouTube channel Marsh Makes Comics. And this is episode number 29. We're moving along here with the episodes of the Early Bird Art Cast. Welcome, all my early birds who are not quite here yet, but hopefully you guys will filter in soon. Um, and today I have, uh, once again, Kim Holm on. Um, who was on before. How you doing, man? Hi, I'm uh, doing good. And you? I'm doing all right, man. Um, just trying to get ink this uh, drawing of uh, my character Tusk and um, for a commission. And yeah, maybe I'll get onto some comics if I get this done quickly. We'll see. What do you, uh, we already kind of chatted about it a little bit, um, but let's uh, let everybody know what, what are you working on right here? Looks pretty uh, awesome. I, thank you. I'm working uh, basically on two portraits based on the H.P. Lovecraft story, uh, the picture in the house. So this mm -hmm. is an old cannibal uh, with his favorite book. And I'm not doing it for anything particular. I'm just doing it in order to try to learn how to paint because mm -hmm. I'm... I, I've never been a painter. I've never done much painting. And uh, the last half a year, I've tried more. Um, I, I've tried to really figure out how to do painting and what separates painting from uh, from drawing. And this is sort of one of three different approaches I'm uh, trying to learn. And this is a more illustratorly approach, but I'm also doing stuff that is with oil and is more expressive or more observational, like more lifelike. This mm -hmm. is um, there's a kind of a, a little backstory to how I, I learned this technique that I'm using or misusing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's hear it. So uh, I got um, um, I do these um, live drawings uh, when I go to concerts and draw um, people play extreme metal bands, uh, and, and that gets me in touch with a lot of weird people, <laughs> uh, and not always in good ways. Uh, you know, there's mostly just lovely people listening to all kinds of extreme metal. But there are some really weirdos. So whenever someone I don't know um, sends me something, I'm uh, a bit skeptical. So I had been drawing this band 1349, and I was um, having a beer with them backstage, and I got a um, message from someone I didn't know on Instagram, and I never get Instagram messages. And mm -hmm. uh, I thought, no, he's sending me pictures. I don't want to see this. Uh, I, I, I'm not opening this. And then a few day later, uh, days later, I, I, I opened the uh, um, uh, the the mail yes. again, and. and and I saw that, oh, he's, uh, he's, he's been doing some work for this band, 1349. Okay, I'll, mm -hmm. he, he wants to show me his stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll click uh, the, the links, and I clicked the links, and it was um, really good ac acrylic paintings of Romans. And uh, we got talking. Uh, online and uh, um, I said that uh, I was trying to learn how to paint and he offered me to um, uh, uh, yeah I can show you some tips and tricks and it turns out that uh, he Dylan is um, uh, a friend and uh, a student of um, uh, Glenn Fabry who did the covers for preacher ah. basically he took me through Glenn Fabry's method step by step 
And uh, that's one of the, you know, uh, insanely uh, generous thing for a complete stranger to do online. Right. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of nice people online. <laughs> yeah. Uh, often you don't think so, but there are. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a wild place. Sometimes you find some uh, some good characters and bad characters. It's, oh yeah, you never know. <laughs> um, so uh, what, what what's the secret to his technique? <laughs> is that what what mediums are, are media are you using? This is uh, yeah. acrylic, so I'm using a whole bunch of uh, acrylics. I'm using some high end acrylics from Golden uh, mm-hmm. and liquid acrylics, which I love. And I'm also using some cheap uh, Liquitex basics uh, and some even cheaper bought from the local, you know, cheap store. Uh, and basically the, the um, technique is to have a really good uh, black and white drawing to start with. And then... Mm. Um, um, doing ink washes to tone it all down and then lifting things up again and toning it down and lifting it up and using some spatters and stuff that I like as well. Um, And now I'm at the point where this one is probably as good as finished um, while the portrait is still quite some way from getting finished. And one of my big problems learning how to paint is um, that I'm too impatient at the wrong stages. Hmm. So uh, if you're going to paint something figurative, you're going to have have to have a really good uh, sketch underneath. The drawing Mm -hmm. has to be really, really good. And I'm used to being able to take a pretty decent or okay-ish drawing Mm -hmm. and make it good in my kind of loose, inky style. And then uh, also I'm used to being able to spatter around and make this really rough ink drawing uh, and not really use too much time on the finish. But again, you have to be really patient on the finishing of a good painting, I think. So it's uh, everything I get away with while uh, drawing, I can't get away with when inking. No, when, when painting. Hmm. Well, you maybe could get away with it, <laughs> but you just, you want to, you have a certain maybe thing in mind that you want to probably get to, I'm assuming. Um, Cause to me, I'm kind of this, I think I'm the same way as you when it comes to that, when I've done paintings and stuff and really whatever I do, like even my comic books, it would probably turn out better. Like this, this is like a very, what I'm working on now is like, as detailed as I ever get with a drawing before I go to inks a lot of times it's way looser than this almost to the point where I'm literally drawing with my inks and and there's hardly anything that I'm going by underneath um I don't recommend that method but I do it (laughs) because of similar reasons like I get impatient I just want to get work done sometimes I have to get work done um but yeah I don't know It, it really I think it just depends on what you're going for maybe and and, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe it is like a big part of it probably I think is patience as well. Um, yeah, but, but uh, um, when you're working with line work and flat colors or more or less flat colors, mm-hmm. they are a lot more forgiving because um, the eyes or the, the mind of the re- reader makes out the forms himself 
But when you're doing paint and you're doing, uh, you're modeling with paint, then, then the mind is of the viewer is doing a very small job in interpreting it. Mm. Uh, so you can't you can't hide your mistakes in your viewers' imaginations, and also some stuff that you know. We looked at the, the Jack Kirby uh, page that you're uh, wiping for your uh, elephant for mm -hmm. Tusk, and uh, it's wrong in so many ways. Kirby's art is anatom uh, the anatomy is just way off and the line work is all kinds of wonky and the expressions are weird but it just works mm -hmm. uh, and I think um, I think that if you're going to do something similar with the paint you can do it but it's it's uh, more difficult and it very easily becomes just macabre. Mm. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I've always kind of struggled with a uh, kind of paint when it comes to that. Cause uh, I, you know, it's hard for me to justify to my own mind and, and it doesn't, I, I think it probably is not very smart, but um you know, making this beautiful drawing that you're going to cover up, you know, that it's like hard for me to like work that much and then just cover it up. Um, but I do notice that artists who are really good at painting, like uh, a, f a friend of the show, um, Jeff Lafferty, uh, a lot of people really like his stuff. He kind of, he's kind of got this, um, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he's kind of got um, this uh, Drew Struzan type of, uh, technique that he kind of uses and uh, he's just really good at it he do, he kind of does a, a few different styles but that's like one he's kind of known for has and it's just really little, what's uh, that has he, some, uh, has he uh, uh, got a youtube channel yes uh, yes if you yeah, just I look up I've, i think yeah. i've uh, i'm seeing watching everyone who's uh, painting anything on youtube these days just to steal all their techniques so i think <laughs> i've seen some of his stuff very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I can actually. I happen to. I keep some of his work uh, here. There's this. Yeah. And his, so like this, this stuff is like kind of his more Drew Strews and stuff style stuff. Um, Yeah, I don't know. It's it's just really good stuff. And then this is his comic book style, which is kind of more along the lines of like Simon Beasley. Yeah. So, or Bisley, I don't know how you say it, but but anyway, so like he, I always am amazed at like like his underdrawing. Like actually, let me open this back up. Um, these like these right here, that would be like an underdrawing to his painting. Maybe yeah. maybe not all the highlights. I don't know, but like it's so I, I'm always amazed at how detailed it is. And then you know he'll go and cover it up sometimes. I don't I don't know. He he does like a few different passes. Like he'll he'll do an underdrawing like that as like the practice round, and then he'll do like an under like and just keep that by itself, like not paint over it. And then he'll do another underdrawing to paint on that's yeah. about that same level. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> he's doing a lot of work, but obviously he gets amazing results. So, Yeah, I, I was just about to say that, that the ones who get really good results, at least if you're talking more illustratorly or figurative, they, mm -hmm. they all do like these insane sketches and color studies and stuff that just looks looks perfect but it's just a study mm -hmm. and, um, and I, I'm trying to see if I can get bitten by that bug <laughs> uh, it would be nice and yeah. when I was doing comics I, you know I wasn't averse to doing like 
uh, you know, many passes at the thumbnail sketches and then many passes at the, the, the more story sketches and then do the detailed pencils and then do the inking. So, so I'm not actually averse to doing all that sketching. I'm just averse to doing it for a single image. <laughs> that, that's the part that seems weird to me. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think just different people have different approaches. I, I mean, it's like, I see that, I see that people do that and I love the results they get. And I guess I kind of wish I got, this, you know, as good results sometimes, but at the same time, you know, we were looking at Jack Kirby <laughs> yeah. and, you know, if he did like three passes before he finished the page, he would not be getting three, four pages done in a day like he did you know and and he wouldn't have the productivity and i i just tend to be more on the side of i'd rather be you know get a lot of stuff out although <laughs> i'm not saying that you can't get a lot out though because i mean i say that but then i look at jeff lafferty and he's more prolific than a lot of people i know so he gets a ton of work out <laughs> hmm. so i don't know <laughs> But, but, but you ha no matter what you do, you have to sacrifice uh, 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 something. I, I mean, um, have you seen John Buscema's uh, sketches for when he, he did, you know, at the most he did over 100 pages a month. Mm -hmm. And he did wow. it, it, it all in his reasonably realistic style. He's a mm -hmm. very elegant penciler. Mm -hmm. And uh, how he got it made was that basically his uh, sketches that he sent to inkers were just stickmen. They were an, an, an anatom what is it? anatomically perfect stickmen, but they were stickmen. And mm. the inkers had to put in basically all the detail. Wow. And, you know, that's uh, you can do it like that, <laughs> but uh... that's crazy. <laughs> it's weird because his style, I think, comes through though. Like if he's just doing that, you know, yeah, but, but his but style it, still when, comes through. When you see what I describe as stickman, you instantly recognize it as Bushema, and you instantly uh, see that it's the anatomy is just spot on, perfect. Wow. But you also see that the arm is just a single line, <laughs> but it's a line that <laughs> defines all the the things it needs to define, and it's wow. uh, quite insane. Yeah, that's the mark of a very mature cartoonist for sure. <laughs> and I was also uh, when when you talked about uh, that you don't want that sort of uh, that perfection you can get when you do sketch after sketch and just mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm very much of the same mind and it reminds me of a jazz pianist uh, I don't remember his name but he, he um, he knew how to play the accordion and in an interview once, he said, um, a true gentleman is someone who knows how to play the accordion and chooses not to. And <laughs> basically, that's how I feel about great figurative art. Mm. I, I want to know how to do it and then choose not to. <laughs> that's... Right. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm after. That's definitely an interesting way to look at it. And it reminds me of, uh, you know, the whole thing is you got to, you know, know the rules before you can break them type of thing that you hear a lot of people say. And, you know, it is true. And, uh, you know, but, it, it also reminds me of like, um, what's his name? Um, Picasso, you know, because he could do amazing um, you know, detailed realism type of artwork, 
but he obviously chose not to for the stuff that, you know, got him famous. Yeah. So, yeah, and I mean, I'm the same way, too, to a certain extent. I mean, I, I don't have the mastery in either one of those two realms that a lot of, you know, well-known artists do yet. But, um, you know, if you were to look, you know, dig deep into my Instagram or go to my um, Zillustrations Instagram, you know, you'd see some of my more detailed work and, you know, that I, I am capable of doing, you know, realism and things like that. But again, you know, I tend, what, what I tend to show is more cartoony, more rough, um, because that's kind of, I'm going for that comic book kind of style and, and stuff. So I think every artist is kind of like that to a certain degree, or Indeed. I don't know if every artist, but a lot of artists are, um, especially comic book artists. Yeah, there, there are some, there are some dangers. Uh, um, uh, one danger is that, uh, and I'm just speaking from my own experience, so I'm just saying, when I say it's a danger, I'm saying this is something I do regularly. And mm -hmm. one thing is to, to say to make excuses for why you're not drawing as good as you want to draw uh, mm. and saying yeah i could learn how to draw, uh, paint this realistic portrait but i'm not going to because i want my style and i'm doing that mm. constantly and the other thing is uh, when I finally sit down and do it, I try to say to myself, I'm going to learn the rules in order to break the rules. And then I end up falling in love with the rules. Mm. And that also kills the art for me. And some of the things that are helping my art the most that um, I have to keep reminding myself of all the time is that I actually don't want uh, a very uh, um, academic look. I don't want a polished look. And whenever I put my pencil or my brush to the to the paper I think I want it but when I actually step back I want something rough something uh, uncompromising something that looks natural um, not unlabored but like it's labored in some sort of panic <laughs> um, and that look, when I'm working with it, doesn't feel good to me. So I have to just step back and say, no, this face is not how I wanted it to be. But it's actually better because of its weirdness. So I have to stop now. Yeah. And that's a hard thing to remind yourself. Yeah. Yeah, it absolutely is. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, we're kind of both similar in the fact that we both like to uh, play around with maybe a rougher look or try to at least. But yeah, it's it's really tough. Um, I have a hard time. One thing that I've come up against a lot, and I, I think I'm starting to get a, a little bit of a better handle on so far, um, is kind of this balance between working by with reference and not working with reference and you know if i sit there and try try to make like a drawing and use reference it's hard for me to like make myself choose not to draw exactly what i see because i've learned to draw what i see but when i do that it comes up with a much almost like a better more real realistic kind of drawing 
but I want to get, but I'm going for like, you know, a cartoony version of whatever it is I'm, I'm seeing. So I'm, I'm constantly like wrestling with, with like, what, what do I choose to leave in? What do I choose to not leave in? And it can be tough, you know, especially when you get in that mode of trying to draw from reference. Yeah. I've, um, just because of the, the very same reasons I've had to more or less stop drawing from uh, reference directly. So what I do now is if I have time and I need to draw something for, from reference, I first draw a sketch of it from reference or many sketches if I have time. And then I put those sketches away and I put the photo away mm. and I draw it from memory. And if I need to figure out how something was, I take a quick look at the sketch mm -hmm. or the photo, but just a quick look and then go back to it. Because that's a way of getting the weirdness in. Right. Yeah, and I've been doing kind of a similar thing. I, I think I struggled with it a lot more before, and I'm, I'm starting to get a better handle of it. But, um, you know, I... I actually did a drawing of Harry Potter the other day, um, just in my um, nephew's sketchbook, um, because he was over and we were hanging out and it's fun. And he likes to see, he likes to draw and show me his drawings and stuff. So he always brings his sketchbook. Um, and I saw that he had his friends like do some drawings in his sketchbook. And I was like, oh, I'm going to surprise him because he's reading Harry Potter and stuff. So. I was like doing a little doodle and stuff, but I wanted to, when I drew it, I wanted to make it like a cartoony Harry Potter. And this probably wasn't, I don't know. Now that I think about it, he probably is going to be like, well, that doesn't look like the Harry Potter from the movies. I don't know, but he is reading the books. But anyways, I didn't want it to um, look like, like specifically like the Harry Potter from the movies, but I was using reference from the movie. Um, just to get like the idea, like kind of the right details on how his clothes look or like how his wand looks or, you know, things like that. Um, and I actually was able to do kind of my own cartoony version that didn't look like, you know, the actor. And uh, I, that's something I wasn't able to do, you know, like two years ago. And so I don't know, I guess I'm, I am learning a little bit but same thing like you were saying like um you know i had to kind of i got to a point where like i got the shapes down and everything like kind of like doing even doing this like i'm swiping from um from this picture for everybody else who's watching of uh, a jack kirby hulk but you know i kind of put the shapes down so i could kind of get the perspective right on the figure once I did that, I kind of stopped looking at it and, and you could see this looks very, I think very different than that, you know? Um, so it's kind of this, this whole balance of like taking little glances, but not really looking like, I think when you're drawing a realistic drawing from reference, like the kind of traditional artists have done a lot of times, um, you're doing more looking at the reference than you are even doing putting the lines down or the paint down or whatever. Um, with cartooning, it's kind of the opposite, I guess. Yeah, Def definitely. Um, it, with these, I, I actually used um, I used Pinterest to find a lot of great pictures of gnarly looking old men and I drew about 10 or 15 quick sketches and I even drew some wrinkle studies just to figure out the way that wrinkles move and uh, after I started this uh, I haven't looked at them a single time and that's mm. sort of the point here but when, um, when I'm at, at my studio, uh, I do, I'm practicing uh, portrait painting. Mm -hmm. And then I have a, the model sitting for me for, for 
one to three hours until it's done. And mm -hmm. ideally, I don't touch it after the model has gone. But it's mm. a different, get, get different kinds of uh, energies and different kinds of problems from both mm. approaches. But um, especially using photo reference is something I think is b becoming kind of dangerous because everyone has access to all kinds of amazing photography. So because of Google images and all the image databases and stuff like that. And it's just too damned easy to to think that art, making art is Googling an image and copying it with your tool. Um, yeah. And I've done that myself, both for personal things and for art that's commissioned and for uh, professional jobs, you know. So, so, so I'm not saying that it's something that I would never do. I'm saying that it's dangerous to do it because it's easy and everyone does it. <laughs> yeah. Um, it definitely, it, yeah, I, I definitely agree. Um, I do it all the time. Um, <laughs> and I, I try to, I find myself kind of trying to be more, trying to be creative on, on where I get, you know, the stuff. I, I Sometimes I'll, I'll specifically not go to Google um, images on purpose especially if it's something that I feel like is probably searched a lot or, um, you know, for reference, um, or I'll try to vary it up, you know, like, yes, I'm looking at this reference, but I'm really just kind of using it sometimes almost as like to do my practice run sketches and then I'll make up my own pose or whatever it is seems like lately I'm using reference for poses, but yeah, that, I mean, I've seen so many times, you know, people use the poses that I've seen, you know, I've seen some, there's certain references I keep seeing over and over, like people using because it's a cool pose, but you know, if you're, if everybody's doing it, then it, it just, it starts to look kind of weird. Um, there's, there's a comic book artist and I, I always forget his name, but a lot of people like really like the dude, but um, he's well known for basically swiping like all of his stuff from things like in a pretty obvious way. Um, and, you know, to the point where I think he even traces it, which is crazy to me. Um, oh. And I don't actually like judge him for what he does because even that there's an art to. Um, but I would never feel comfortable, I think, with going quite to that length of using reference, you know. But um, uh, I, I think I know which artist you're talking about. I don't remember his name because I, I don't really pay attention to much Marvel and DC mm -hmm. right now. Uh, um, just because of time, I, I would love to do it, but there's too little time when you have stuff yeah. to draw and when Netflix is easier. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Um, but but uh, um, swiping and tracing ha ha has uh, uh, always been a part of comics and uh, is it, what is it, Greg something? Uh, Greg Lamb. Is that it? I yeah, think so. Might be, I might be yeah, wrong. Somebody actually wrote that in the chat too, so I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. Dave so, so, said Greg Land. So. Uh, uh, I haven't really read any of his stuff, but uh, um, I've seen some of the example pages, and, and mm -hmm. you know when he's swiping directly from porn. That, that's not, that doesn't look good. 
and when he's swiping directly from other artists, it's not a good look. Um, mm. But, you know, fundamentally, it seems that his storytelling is up on par with a lot of good artists working today. And yeah. he's probably getting jobs because he can do things on a deadline mm -hmm. uh, and do it with a kind of polish that right. is required. And a lot of people can't do that. So, so uh, in some sense, it's really shitty to steal other people's art but he is actually telling a story. So yeah. that's the point of it all, isn't it? Yeah, you know, and, and I, uh, that's the thing, part of what I come to as well, like um, when I think of somebody who does stuff kind of like he does is, you know, is the art, when, when you're a cartoonist, is the art in, you know, what's more important the like actual art lines you do or the storytelling, like the art is in the storytelling um, more than anything. Um, so you're still kind of being an artist. Um, again, personally, I don't feel comfortable with the level to which he copies. And honestly, part of it is style too. Like, I don't, I don't actually like, I think a lot of artists, or a lot of people like they get very impressed by very detailed representational um, artwork. And to me as an artist, I'm, I'm not actually impressed by that because I feel like every artist can and should be able to do that. Um, that's not hard actually. It's actually easier for me to copy a picture and make it look realistic than it is to do something like this. Um, Cause here I have to interpret things and I also just don't like, you know, I don't want my comic books to look super realistic. I like a cartoony realistic. That's fun. But <laughs> personally, I don't want it to look like a photo. If, if that, then you might as well just do a photo shoot and put them in a sequence of, you know, panels. <laughs> well, it's not uh, difficult to do that kind of stuff, but it is really difficult to do that kind of stuff at 22 pages a month yeah <laughs> True that. it's uh, there was a reason why kirby stuff was wonky and bushema drew stickman mm -hmm. uh, and the level of polish that i find in a lot of modern superhero stories it doesn't seem feasible in the long term to me. Mm -hmm. it, it seems like um, wasted energy. Mm. It's not it's not what the, the re readers are going there for. Yeah. How polish helps, especially with kids. Kids like polish. Uh, but even if you look at some of the image stuff that's um, uh, uh, um, being uh, not, it's not really celebrated too much now, but all the image artists had this amazing energy and their energy was always better than their technique. I mean, mm -hmm. in some instances, like Jim Lee has a great technique, uh, and, and mm -hmm. but uh, like uh, McFarlane was seventy percent energy and thirty percent technique, and then Rob Liefeld was all energy, and. Mm -hmm. It's easy to make fun of Liefeld now, but his stuff was awesome because it just it went straight in your face and right. um, you can't do that now in the same way but you could do something similar in feeling and that will never come from having a polished look 
it will come from having an energetic look. Yeah, I think. And I think, I mean, personally, and maybe it's just because I come from that era, but personally, I just feel like that lends better in the comic form anyways, is having that energy and, and um, you know, even if it's a little bit wonky, like to me, imagination, things like imagination, um, energy, design, um, power, like just kind of powerful, like look that lends itself to comics um a lot more i mean it of course it depends on what kind of comic you're going for but i don't know even with stuff that maybe is more serious like i feel like a more expressive line is something i would much rather choose over um a correct line you know um absolutely i don't know but that maybe just is me but to me, it gets kind of boring when because I do see some styles out there that are very realistic and people are very impressed by that. And, and you know, it is impressive. I mean, they can do that better than I can, even though I can do that um, because they focus on it. But I don't know. To me, it's just not as exciting and interesting, personally. Yeah. Uh, um There are, um, I, I'm an artist who's um, unfortunately uh, driven a lot by anger and envy. So when, when, when mm. I see something, draw something better than me, I get angry and envious and I want to do it better than them. <laughs> uh, and I go home and do my damnedest to do it better. And usually better turns out to be more like me and less like them. So not, yeah. not actually better, but just more me. But uh, I'll, there's a lot of um, different types of art where I can just say it's extremely impressive, but it doesn't fill me with anger and envy. So it's something... I don't want to do so so when i look like uh, if i look at um uh like uh tintin tantan uh by harja you know mm -hmm. the, yeah. Uh, yeah extremely impressive extremely influential on me i can never draw it like that because mm -hmm. i would never get the willpower to do that <laughs> uh, it's not it's not for me and the same with you know Greg Lan is uh, whatever he's doing I could never do it because it's not for me right and a lot of the, the a lot of the um, art in both underground and uh, mainstream comics uh, just um, doesn't uh, it, it doesn't make my blood boil so <laughs> it's probably not for me right um, yeah <clears throat> and I, I mean that's what ends up making you know your style and stuff and so you know, it just kind of ends up coming through. It's your influences, it's your interests, and and even your level of patience <laughs> to some degree. Yeah. Um, so I have a lot of belief in being impatient. I, I you know, all good inventions uh, come out of laziness and impatience. <laughs> yep, I could see that. All right, so it is uh, coming up to the time where I have to get going to work. Uh, Dave Hingley has another comment. I got to bail. Okay, so he's getting he's getting out too. So thanks for hanging with us, Dave. I think you're bailing at just the right time because we're bailing too. <laughs> but um, 
Yeah, I just want to say uh, once again, man, thanks for coming on. And you're, again, you're always welcome um, here. Can uh, you let everybody uh, know where they can find you? There is a link already in the description to your website, but let everybody know. A yeah, bit. the best place to follow me right now is uh, on my Facebook, which is facebook.com slash D-U-H-H hands. So then Unge had home hands. It's very easy to write. Okay, that's <laughs> thanks a lot for uh, having me back on and I hope to see you all again sometime soon. Awesome. Sounds good. Um, thank you, everybody, for watching. You guys rock. Thanks for everybody in the chat, everybody who's watching on the replay, um, and to all my patrons at uh, patreon.com slash projects. I will be coming out with a new comic soon, so you can check that out. And also, you know where to find me, Marshall Lee underscore DJP on Instagram and Twitter. Um, and, yeah, thanks for hanging out, and we will talk to you on the next Early Bird Artcast. See you later.